Welcome back. Uh, this video is a warning about Joyce Meyer. She is a famous, popular author and uh, Bible teacher. And when I was researching doing the videos for Reprobates Part 1 and Part 2, the videos that I most recently edited, if you haven't seen those, they're on turnfromyouridols.com linked there and they're on the YouTube channel and it deals primarily with the word of faith movement and um, what I discovered studying that were a lot of things I didn't even realize about them because I don't follow them very closely but I discovered that they don't just have several different points that they have like a different doctrine on this and a little different opinion on that the issue is they have a different Christ they have a false Christ and that's why people need to be warned to stay away and flee from these false teachers from Genesis to Revelation they have a different Jesus Christ and it's very easy to prove by their own quotes and I'm not gonna hopefully spend too much time on Joyce Meyer First of all, she's a woman. She shouldn't even be teaching and preaching. That's in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. And if you don't like that, uh, I'm sorry, but it's in the Bible. And it's not hard to interpret. It says what it says. It gives the reason because women are to be in subject to the men because of the order of creation. Because women can be a little more easily deceived than men and Joyce Meyer is very deceived and she's leading a lot of people astray with her false teachings and her false doctrines of devils and that's what they are doctrines of devils it's very it's very vexing it's uh, it's so vexing because this person rakes in millions of dollars a week she has so many people fooled that are believing this what I'm about to go through it's disturbing and some of these people that sit in a in a supposedly fundamental church two or three times a week and then during the week they'll listen to her or read her books and stuff and they think there's they don't even get it you need to snap out of it and realize you're being deceived you're being made merchandise of too they're making millions off everything she's got five million dollar house here and $2 million house there and a $500,000 guest house and mansions for her kids and all this stuff. And I mean, come on, give me a break. Give me a break. Following in the footsteps of the corrupt prosperity teachers that came before her and, and preaching the same doctrines of devils. I'm praying that God will break the deception over a lot of people's eyes. So let's start with this. Let's start with this. Listen to this false doctrine that Joyce Meyer teaches. She teaches that Jesus Christ stopped being the Son of God. That's right. And he didn't just stop being the Son of God at a certain point. It was on the cross. Joyce, so who died for our sins? It wasn't the Son of God then, right? And Jesus, if he stopped being part of the Trinity, then he's not God. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Get with it. Don't fall for her garbage. He could have helped himself up until the point where he said, I commend my spirit into your hands. At that point, he couldn't do nothing for himself anymore. He had become sin. He was no longer the Son of God. He was sin. Heresy. Heresy, Joyce. You're busted. He took the penalty for our sin. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on the cross and died for the sins of the world. That's who died on the cross. And that's who rose from the dead. 
it wasn't after being tormented by any demons and devils and unclean spirits in hell either. It's another thing she teaches that's wicked heresy. Claiming... Okay, I'm going to try to switch these around so they're in, in order. So now she teaches that Jesus paid for our sins in hell. Not on the cross. He paid for our sins in hell. She says here in her book, The Most Important Decision You'll Ever Make, May 1993, page 35. It's from the second printing. He became our sacrifice and died on the cross. He did not stay dead. He was in the grave three days. During that time, he entered hell, where you and I deserve to go, literally, because of our sin. He paid the price there. He paid the price there? Well, let's see about that. Let's see what the scriptures, the Bible, says about that. Let's see if that's true or not. Is that where Jesus Christ paid the price for the sins of the world? Because, uh, I don't think it is. Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated, and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you an unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. On the cross. Colossians 2, verse 13. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. It happened at the cross. Anybody who ever tries to take away from the work that the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross... His work, his redemptive work at the cross. They are heretics. Don't listen to some teacher that's telling you that cross was part of it. And then the, the, something else has to be the rest of it. I mean, obviously the resurrection. But you know what I'm talking about. He paid for the sins of the world on the cross. And he went there on purpose. And yes, he could have came down. But he loved us too much. I don't know if Joyce understands that love. I know she's got a lot of money. 1 Peter 2, verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. And that's talking about salvation. That by, you, by whose stripes ye were healed. That's not talking about if you get a stuffy nose. You can name it and claim it and get better in two seconds. It's talking about forgiveness of sins. Isaiah 53. So she teaches that Jesus paid for our sins in hell. How did he do that? Well, this is part of the part of the heresy. Jesus went to hell in our place and he was tormented by devils and unclean spirits. And what she calls demons. Okay. Before I even read this. 
I can't wait to before we even read this part. Listen, the, how there's not a bunch of devils and demons and unclean spirits and ghouls and different things down in hell partying and or doing anything. They're not there right now. Okay, Satan is not there. He's going to go there, and when he does, he's going to be bound. Eventually, he's going into the lake of fire with all unbelievers and fearful and whoremongers and covetous and all manner of wicked unbelievers are going to go to the lake of fire eventually. Okay? But hell is not some place where these devils and stuff are down there doing what they want. The only unclean spirits and devils, if you want to call them that, demons or whatever, that are down in if you want to call it hell right now, they're chained up, they're bound up for what they did back in the Genesis 6 chapter. Okay, and it speaks about how, I think it's in Jude, it talks about how God has them bound up. All right, but there, there is no such thing as hell being like the devil's headquarters, like his little, you know, like you see on cartoons. So that whole idea, the whole idea that she's basing this unbiblical garbage off of makes no sense and it's heresy for that reason right off the bat but listen to what she says these demons and devils and unclean spirits did to the lord jesus christ quote this is from the most important decision you'll ever make page 36 jesus paid on the cross and went to hell in my place then as god had promised on the third day jesus rose from the dead rose from the dead the scene in the spirit realm went something like this. God rose up from his throne and said to demon powers, tormenting the sinless son of God, let him go. Then the resurrection power of almighty God went through hell and filled Jesus. On earth, his grave where they had buried him was filled with light as the power of God filled his body. That that's None of this is in the Bible, okay? I just, in case you don't know... The, this stuff she's talking about right here is not chapter and verse in the Bible. I don't care what version you have. It's not biblical. She's making it up. She Well, she heard it from Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Hagen and Oral Roberts and all these other weirdos that she learned from. On the, on the earth, his grave where they had buried him was filled with light as the power of God filled his body. He was resurrected from the dead, the first born-again man. Now this brings us to her next heresy, that Jesus was born again. So this is, ye must be born again. Ye is a plural. That means you, all of you, okay? You, the whole world. Uh, not Jesus. <laughs> because being born again implies that you're dead in your sins. You were born spiritually dead. And you need to be born again so that you can be raised to eternal life with God, the Father. Have your sins forgiven, okay? Jesus Christ was God incarnate in the flesh. He had the Holy Spirit. It's heresy. But it fits in with their little plan about teaching that they're little gods. And then they teach that when they're born again, they're just a little God just like Christ. And it's, a, it's another part of their new age thing, but it gives them the right to do all the little weird stuff that they do and speak things into existence they teach and all these other heresies that I'm not even going to get into here today. I'm dealing with core facts of heresy that she constantly uh, presents in her books, tapes, shows, and videos that anyone can find. So, so y'all, people can be warned. Um... Do you know something? The minute that blood sacrifice was accepted, Jesus was the first human being that was ever born again. Now, it was sealed. I mean, it happened when he was in hell. This is a bunch of garbage. Like I just said, um, Ephesians chapter 2. Like I just said, being born again means you need to be saved from your sins. Jesus took the place for our sins. He didn't deserve it. He didn't sin once. Okay? He did not sin. He paid the price that he didn't know because of God's grace 
God's love toward us while we were yet sinners. And we could do nothing to save ourselves. Nothing. Ephesians 2, 1. And you hath he quickened. Quickened means raised back to life, brought back to life, made alive. Who were dead in trespasses and sins. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. Not the death, burial, suffering in hell, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's a pretty big one to skip. If that's something we need to have faith in. She teaches, if you don't believe Jesus went to hell, you cannot be saved. Gee, sounds a little bit like a different gospel when you put it that way. She says in her in her book here, um, most important decision you'll ever make, second printing, page 37, his spirit went to hell because that is where we deserve to go. There is no hope of anyone going to heaven unless they believe this truth. Hmm. Really? Um, let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. That's the Gospel. Repent and believe the gospel. That's the gospel part. The death, burial, and the the propitiatory, the sacrificial death in our place, paying for our sins that we deserve. Yes, she's right about that. We do deserve to go to hell. But her little extra ingredient there, it's not biblical. It's another gospel. You better be warned. But they have a reason for modifying God's word and, and the gospel. Um, she teaches that uh, we are little gods. It's another little verse they twist. It's usually based on one or two obscure little things, and then they twist it and blow it out of proportion, take it out of context, and make it into a big false doctrine that they hinge other things off of. Um... I have a clip of this audio about talking about being little gods. I was listening to a set of tapes by one man and he explained it like this and I think this kind of gets the point across. He said, you know, why do people have such a fit about God calling his creation, his creation, his man, not his whole creation, but his man, little gods? If he's God, what's he going to call them but the God kind? I mean, if you as a human being have a baby, you call it a human kind. If, if cattle has another cattle, they call it cattle kind. So, I mean, what's God supposed to call us? Doesn't the Bible say we're created in His image? Now, you understand, I'm not saying you are God with a capital G. That is not the issue here, so don't go trying to stone me or yell blasphemy at me. So, go to John 10. Start in verse 24 so we can get some context. Then came the Jews round about him. And said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. 
I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Okay, so hold it for one second here. So here's what's happening. The Jews are trying to kill Jesus Christ because he said he's God. Right? Now, he is going to use scripture to point something out to them. Jesus answered them, verse 34, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods, with a small g? And he's quoting Psalm 82, verse 6. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God? It has nothing to do with telling, with, it's not a doctrine that's teaching that we are little gods. And Kenneth Copeland, the blasphemous devil, he said something to the effect, maybe I can find the clip. And I say this with all respect, so that it don't upset you too bad. But I say it anyway. When I read in the Bible where he says, I am, I just smile and say, yes, I am too. Blasphemy. It's blasphemy. Yes, it is. Okay. And one of the last points we're going to cover here is that Joyce Meyer says she is not a sinner. I believe I have an audio clip of that. I am not poor. I am not miserable. And I am not a sinner. That is a lie from the pit of hell. That is what I were. And if I still was, then Jesus died in vain. I'm going to tell you something, folks. I didn't stop sinning until I finally got it through my thick head. I wasn't a sinner anymore. And the religious world thinks that's heresy and they want to hang you for it. But the Bible says that I'm righteous and I can't be righteous and be a sinner at the same time. Uh, 1 John 1 8. Please, if you're following along. First John chapter 1, verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We, if we, John and the other Christians. Oh, oh wait, let's check make sure. Who's the letter written to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's written to fellow Christians. Because it keeps saying we in here. And um, it's talking to Christians. So, um, And then verse 9. Well, let's read verse 8 again. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay, that's through sanctification. It's not a one-time shot. You get zapped and you're never sin ever again. Give me a break. If it depended on that, you'd be losing your salvation all the time. And there are people that believe in that, but I'm not one of them. I believe that God preserves his saints okay Paul struggled with sin is Paul am I any better than Paul is Joyce Meyer any better than John and Paul I don't think she's even better than Ringo I'm sorry Lord it's oh, pretty ridiculous If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. We make 
God a liar if we say that we have not sinned. It's not talking about before you get saved. Obviously, to be saved, you have to realize you're a sinner before God. Humble yourself and repent, and you're saved. Okay, you believe in the gospel. This is written to believers. Uh, so is James. And most of the rest of the New Testament that, that talks about turning away from sin, being careful to flee from idols, and all the different things, the warnings and commands. Why would those be there? Yes, God sees us as righteous when we're saved. It doesn't mean every single act we perform is righteous. Because it's not. She's sick. She's a sick lady. She thinks that she doesn't sin. She's a, and that's a dangerous kind of person right there. Um... Let's go into Romans 7, verse 15. Romans 7, verse 15. We'll just start there. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh... See the distinction? There's a distinction after you're saved, okay? You have the new man. You're born again of, of the Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. And you have the old man, the flesh. That's the way the Bible spells it out. And there's a battle going on all the time. <laughs> if there's not, you're not saved. Sorry. Especially this wretched world we're living in right now. There is a battle going on inside of a believer, a born-again believer. It's a battle between the spirit and the flesh. The new man, the old man, okay? So you need to bring your body under subjection and let the Holy and whoops. Let the Holy Spirit control. When we don't, things don't go right because we sin. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. And it goes on and on to explain. But Joyce Meyer is a liar. She does sin. Especially if you take a look at her lifestyle. It's called covetousness. It's called greed. Those are sins. Yeah. Yeah, those are sins. Well, those are bad sins. Because you can't serve two masters. You can't serve God and mammon or money. You can't. You will either love one the real one, you either love the real God and hate the other, or you will cling to the one and hate God. These prosperity preachers be doing a lot of clinging on to a lot of money, and a lot of houses and jets and cars and trips and any other carnal, fleshly desire that they have for their life. And that's wickedness. And they give money to charity too. Maybe they do. But they live like kings too. And they sell millions of dollars worth of junk to people filled with lies. And that's damnable heresy from the pit of hell. It's not coming from God's word. They're false teachers. It's funny, she admits on this one clip here that she gets revelation knowledge. She says um, the Bible can't even find any way to explain this. you got to get it by revelation. Ooh. The Bible can't even find any way to explain this. Not really. That's why you got to get it by revelation. There are no words to explain what I'm telling you. I've got to just trust God that He's putting it into your spirit like He put it into mine. 
hosts of hell were literally on Jesus and were laughing at him. It's another one of her little fantasy world doctrines that doesn't come from the Bible. It comes out of uh, cuckoo, cuckoo, you know, little her little revelation thing that she gets that she tunes into from Mars or something. This is I I have a clip I have a clip that audio for this so suffer through this. Oh, they were having the biggest party that ever been had. They had my Jesus in the floor, and they were standing on his back, jumping up and down, laughing. And he had become sin. Don't you think that God was pacing, wanting to put a stop to what was going on? All the hosts of hell were up on him. Up on him. Up on him. The angels are in agony. All the creation is groaning. All the host of hell was upon him. Up on him. They got on him. They got him down in the floor and got on him. And they were laughing and mocking. Ah, ha, 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 ha. You trusted God and look where you ended up. You thought he'd save you and get you off that cross. He didn't. Ha, ha, ha. She makes me sick. I'm sorry. It sounds like a demon's little fantasy to me. That's what it sounds like. Hmm. Let's read about what took place on the cross. John 19. Verse 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Okay, did you, did you get that part? The scripture was fulfilled. The scripture about the atonement for our sins. Had been, was being fulfilled, okay? And he knew it. That the, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saying, saith, I thirst. Now there was a set, a vessel full of vinegar, that they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Jones is sick. Per, uh, uh, Joyce is a sick person. I think she is filled with pride, and I think we can prove that by the fact that she doesn't think she sins, and from the way she lives her life, it's all about herself. She is a covetous person. She is not a godly person, and she's going against the scriptures. By being a Bible teacher, first of all. She's not just having a Bible study with some little children or some ladies from around the from around the neighborhood. And that, that's fine. We're not talking about that. Or some ladies Bible study at a church, a local group or something. No. No, 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 no. She is making a merchandise off of being a preacher. And she's not preaching God's word. She's preaching doctrines of devils that go contrary to the Holy Bible. You need to stay away from her. She has a lot of people bewitched and enchanted with her little witchcraft ways. Yeah. She likes to talk about speaking things into existence. 
and having power and things like that in your words and things. That's a lot of witchcraft. It's a whole other topic of another video with the secret and all these different things. Law of attraction. But I just want to get one video out to start with to show you that she goes against the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to the Bible, according to the scriptures. She adds to it and takes away from it. Galatians chapter 1 verse 6 I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel which is not another but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, than that ye have received, let him be accursed. It's repeated two times in a row right there. He said even, even if an angel comes and preaches a different gospel than what they gave him, let him be accursed. Because Satan can appear as an angel of light. And I think he does sometimes to some of these whackouts like Todd Bentley and whoever else, some of these people that they claim they have these, you know, some of these little stories they come out with, that could be real, but it's not the Lord. No, it's it devils. So you need to use discernment and test all things against the scripture. That's why it's so important for you to study. Study. We need to study to show. It says study to show they self approved. A workman. You need to study the scriptures. And put on the full armor of God. And if you don't have the scriptures. If you don't have the mind of Christ. That comes from God's word. The King James Bible. You're going to be vulnerable and you're going to believe you're going to hear a lady like that. She's got a, you know, she's got a degree on her wall and millions coming in and selling books and she's got followers here and followers there. And well, she must know what she's talking about. And she sprinkle in a little bit of Bible here and Bible there. And then she captures you. You won't be ready to discern. Sorry, that's not of God. That's not biblical. That's not from God's word. I'm going to go and check. See, right there. That's not That's not what the Bible says. See, that's what you need to be on guard all the time. I don't care if it's the preacher at the church, local church you belong to. You should be checking him against God's word too. But all these phonies on television, they're not worth really a moment. Most of them have this false gospel, this prosperity heresy, and you can tell by the fruits of their life most of the time, this is what they're doing with their life, with their wealth, with their riches. They're fleecing the flock. They're the blind leading the blind into the ditch. And they're headed for hell. And I'm telling you that because when you preach a different gospel to millions of people, I don't care if you preach it to one person, the Bible just, we just read it, the Bible says, let them be accursed. Accursed. So this is part, this is, so I just need to get this warning out because um, the Lord's been showing me that there are a lot more people deceived than I realize. There's people deceived by Joseph Prince. I'm going to do some research on him. I already found out that there's people deceived by him. There are people that might be saved. There are people that might be reading the Bible. I mean, I don't know how they can be deceived but you know these charismatic people they they're using they're using spells okay and Prince Joseph Prince he states that Kenneth Hagin was his big influence okay Hagin is a wicked devil 
he's a big papa behind all this satanic prosperity word faith speak it and tweak it or whatever they call it movement <laughs> manifestation of that anointing. We got that. Yep. We got that.
Search the scriptures. Prove all things against God's word. Not against what you like or your past or what tickles your ears. There are many false Christs right now. False, false teachers trying to deceive. And we need to wake people up. So thank you and I'll be praying for you.